Good afternoon. I'm delighted to welcome you to our session today. Uh, our topic is Miro Miro on the Wall. And uh, we are very happy to present Wei Hao Chang, who is also with our department, a graphic designer who has shared this item with us. So uh, we are going to uh, let him get started. Thank you, Wei Hao. Thank you, Judy. Hi, everyone. My name is Wei Hao Chen, or you can call me Kent. I am the Instructional Technology Coordinator here at FAU Center for Online and Continuing Education. Today, I will introduce you Miro, which is a software, or you can call it web application, because this software can fully run in your browser, which is pretty awesome. We can use it everywhere. Um, it's a collaboration tool for a team or even for yourself. Uh, sometimes I use it to make mind map, uh, take notes. So I really like this software. Uh, I hope it inspire you in the, to this session. Let's get started. Uh, today I'll talk about some basic elements uh, where this software uh, counts comes from. Uh, I've used this software a long time ago, since a long time ago. And some introduction on uh, how it can work with different use cases. Also, how easy it is for you and your team or for students and their team to work through the project. Uh, also, I'll show an inter uh, interesting, fun example we made in, within our team last week. Then I'll have a demo session to go through the actual interface and a like live, live action on how things work inside Miro. And then I will we will have a link for you guys to actually join together into Miro, and I hope that's going to be really fun. Then in the last part of the presentation, we will answer your questions. Uh, so if you have questions, you can keep it, take a note. Uh, we will be really happy to answer any of that. So uh, I believe everybody grew up with a whiteboard somewhere sometimes Blackboard, uh, but we see it in our meetings, workshops, even when we are brainstorming, we're doing research, planning, strategy. Uh, so basically, the idea is just for more than one person, a group of people to collaborate. Um, it's just those tiny moments that when everybody's talking about one thing or one, one subject. You will have to feel lucky if in the meeting somebody's taking notes. If they don't, uh, they probably miss it. So usually we have a whiteboard or a blackboard to write things down or put uh, sticky notes on the wall so we can keep track of uh, the ideas we have or the solution we we, we we had as a team. So that was the really essential purpose of having a board for a group of people. So uh, comes to Miro, uh, I, <clears throat> I was introduced to this product or this software around five years ago. Uh, it was called real-time board at the time. Uh, totally free, and it was just this idea of I can have an infinite canvas on the internet, and they have some tools that you can do sticky notes, uh, take notes, mind map. Uh, then you can share it with your team. I was really excited with that, and in the past few years, their 
software is just growing so fast. They have tons of uh, new functions, new features. It's just it's growing into a really interesting uh, platform, which I really like. What does it do though? There are many use cases. Uh, people use it to do meetings and workshops. As far as uh, what they wrote, what they have on the internet, on their website, there are over 5 million users today. And a lot of them are really professionals. They were even uh, rec recommended by the MBA star, Steve Curry, which is really interesting. Um, also, I use it for ideation and brainstorming with my team. Uh, for this part, it's really a big tool for you to track your ideas and for the team to have a common place to collect all the video elements or the keywords you have. Uh, Agile workflow is something if you are running uh, projects. This is mostly there are scenarios that you run into these workflows. Basically, just go back to fix things, and Miro also help you to track that. Uh, also, research and design. This is also use cases I use a lot. Uh, actually, one of our website, I was using Miro to work with my team to have to have the project completed. Strategy and planning, mapping, diagramming product management, mind mapping, which I really like. <clears throat> so you can see there are a lot of use cases for it. I want to show you really quick uh, what their website looks like. If you go to their website, they have actually tons of resources. Uh, they have products, tutorials, their use cases. This, they just have a lot of inspiring use cases and this uh, amazing, easy to understand information. And uh, one thing I, I'm really impressed is they have this Miro verse. This is a place where people can share their use cases or their projects, how they use Miro to accomplish their tasks or how they work with their teams. And everybody can share their experience or their results. Also, you can see there's a publish your board here. To use it, it's also really simple. Uh, you go to Miro site. If you are a team leader or if you are starting a project or if a student is starting a project, uh, they just sign in to the, to the Miro website. They actually have tons of different signing methods. You can sign in with your Google account. Microsoft account, when you, if you have Slack, uh, then you, you create your canvas or your board, then you just share it with a proper setting, which is like two steps. Uh, it's really similar to Google document sharing. You can have uh, restrictions on the way you share. Then you can start collaborating. This is an example of a fun activity we had as a team last week. Uh, we have this idea of uh, making your imaginary office since everybody has been isolated. And this sounds like a really good fun project. And what you see on the screen is the mirror board we created with six offices. And everybody's posting their ideas. The project was really fun. Oh. So let's go to the demo. Uh, I will go through. Uh, this is a board I create for this PD session. You can see the basic, really basic uh, interface. Let's put this away. So if you if you can see the the other two courses with names, that's our colleagues. They are in the on the board with me. 
and it's really easy. There's a select tool that you can select different things. I can select this fire and just move it. And this is reflected on teammates screen real time. As you can see, they can also move the fire if they want to. Uh, Kathy, uh, do you want to try to move one of the fire icon for us? There we go. So yeah, Kathy is now moving the fire. Uh, so on the left, this is the main functionality, main tools you have. Uh, because there are so many use cases for Miro, they actually have this really handy tool called templates. And you can find one you want. For example, there's a mind map and the customer journey map, flow chart. Uh, if you see one you like, you just choose it. For example, I really like mind map. I'll just add it. Uh, let's do add the field is pretty simple. So you can see really cool my map going up. This is an example of course you can have a blank one. It's also easy to use if uh, to zoom in and zoom out. If you have some experience with Photoshop or Illustrator, this might be familiar. Uh, it's a text tool. You can type, let's say, Hello, ED. And it's really handy because you can change change the type, change the color, you can even have background color. And this is basically a, an object you can move around. So the more you have, the more complex you see on the screen. Say Let's put my name here. And how handy this is, you see the size also change as you type. And you can also do things like connect the dots. Now then this can go to a mind map. It's really flexible. There's um, the limitation is only your imagination, I'll say. Uh, you can do sticky notes, of course and start to type different sizes, different shape, and also different shapes. I'm just going through really quick for the tools. And you guys will have chance to actually use it in a bit. One thing I really like is this connection tools. You know, it's just when for example, one person posts an idea, the other person will say, oh, maybe this has some relationship with the fire, they can just use it, uh, connect to another shape or another dot. Things like this is really interesting. Of course, you can have pens that you can destroy stuff. Uh, comments is also a really fun function. So you don't really touch the content, but you can leave comments like, I have something to say for this sticky note. You can just click it here. And it has your name um, on, the, on the comments. Yes, and issue. And you can see it tracks your comments. The little icon, you can change the color. It's really good on communicating for projects. Wonderful. Hey, Kent, could you show sure. the piece about how when you, that one piece where everybody's names were floating around and that quick click of how to change it because that okay. was one piece that was distracting for folks. Sure, sure. Uh, so there's a small cursor next to your profile picture. Whoa. <laughs> uh, so this is an on and off switch. If you keep it on, you can see everybody's on the canvas. Uh, if you switch off, you can have less distraction. You just work on your things. Um, 
Thank you. You're welcome. So also you can upload your files, images, or this also works with videos and images, videos, even Google Documents. Uh, and they just they have a bunch of options here. As, as, as I mentioned, this product is scoring really big, uh, but it doesn't slow down your browser, which is really cool. And the three dots is where the cool things are. So they have this uh, third party apps that can be plugged into Miro. For example, the one we used last week was this emoji application. You have tons of emojis here. Uh, another cool one is, let's see, you can actually have sticky captures. Uh, imagine on your phone, you can take a photo of sticky notes and it just goes into a mirror, mirror canvas. So you don't, if you prefer handwriting or you, you are a sticky note guy, this is a perfect function for you. Uh, they have Unsplash plugin, you can search, uh, what's that called? Um, license free photos here from the very famous website Unsplash. Then you just drag it into the mirror board. It's just really cool. I really like it. Oh, this is a sheer function where you can see uh, how do you change your permission settings? Really easy. There are some basic settings here. It shows you shortcuts or tons of advanced functions. You can also do search. For example, I remember I had something about my name. It shows me, oh, there's a text box. So this is really handy. Uh, they have this feed, a little bell icon. It tells you what's, what has been changed on the board recently. So it actually keeps track of what your teammates has been working on. This is a note, it's just sometimes it's a good place for you to take notes when you're having a meeting. Uh, because if you are paying for this product, you actually get, you can actually have video conference inside the mirror board, which is amazing. Uh, on the bottom left, there are some other functions here. You can see the comments. If you click one, it goes to that comments. So there's a list that you can find. Um, you can have presentation mode and different frames. Usually I use frames to separate sections of different projects. You can have chat here. Also cards. Cards is more for, it's more for, I will say project tracking. So you have different cards. Um, how do you assign? Uh, assign tasks for your teammate, screen sharing, all that activity. You see who has done what. There's some, these are some crazy impressive functions here. And of course, you have a mini map. You can see actually, I have another section here with some test elements. Uh, you can zoom in and out. This mini map just reflects your. Uh, monitor. So this is the demo and we can now, if you can go to this address, you guys can see it, you can actually in your browser type in this address and join us on the mirror board real time. Uh, you can play around with it. Um, as, uh, meanwhile, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, we will be happy to answer. Uh, a little bit idea about the mirror because I have been thinking, okay, how can this help uh, faculties to teach online? Um, one use case I thought of is 
when you give out projects, maybe in your instruction, you can suggest students on this uh, Miro collaboration. If you go to their website, they, has, they have pricing uh, listing, but with free, free account, you can actually do a lot. Uh, I think you can have multiple people on one project, not multiple projects, but one project. So I think that's that's good for students to work on assignments. So, Kent, this is fantastic. And we did have one question about um, COSI's recommendation regarding registering for the tool. And I think it's important to clarify that um, this is a neat um, tool that we're sharing. It's not something that FAU has adopted and using through Canvas. This is just an extra thing. So if it's something that you want to try, like, like Kent said, um, go ahead and, and sign up for the free account. Uh, Yes, uh, this is not a, a software that's been adapted by FAU, but it's a cool tool. There is no integration with Canvas at this point, maybe in the future, um, but I just thought this is a really good tool to, for you or your students to collaborate. Uh, nothing official. Um, it's just a convenient tool that we really recommend it. I really like. It is great. And we also want to remember that every time we use something like this with our students, we need to check for um, accessibility and copyright compliance and all of those good things too. But um, at the first stages, we're just checking it out and having fun with it. That's the fun, fun part. Okay, let's go back to the middle board. So uh, feel free to do anything on the board. Uh, this this is a test board for you guys. Play with the tools and let me know if any questions. So there are a bunch of templates that we can use. Um, the other one I really like is Journey Map. This is a big board. Uh, it does a lot of things. Hey, Ken, I have a question. Sure. Oh. So if I start writing something, um, like a sentence, can someone else come in and edit that sentence? So I put a sentence on there. Can like someone go in and like help me finish that sentence or can they edit my, my text? Well, uh, I think for, if you are editing, editing a paragraph, that means the paragraph object is under your permission. So nobody can edit it until you unselect the object. Does that make sense? So nobody yes. can interrupt your typing. But once you're done, other people can come in and do stuff. Oh, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, also you can always long. you can always track what has been changed in the activity monitors. Oh, that's terrific for instructors. If students are working together on something, each student has the power to invite somebody to edit or lock it so they doesn't get edited. That's amazing. Yeah. I think the, the ownership is the most important thing if we are having students to work on projects. I'll suggest the instructor actually create the board so they have the full access to it. And you can make sure if the students can only view or comment or edits and all, all, all kind of stuff. Uh, one other quick question. Do you know if, um, if there's a polling feature? I am not sure about polling feature, but I can go through this really quick. That's okay. I was just curious because I think you can make like a uh, like a table for students if they want to. You know, if you're in class and you have a question, 
um, in order to sometimes it's hard to tell if, a, if an online student is engaged in um, maybe the discussion or in the session and a way to have to see if they're being engaged is to kind of maybe post a question in like a table or a poll in the mirror board and have um, everyone respond. That way it's like documented, you're getting the student engaged. I like that. Oh, I don't think, I don't see a polling, polling function here, but with your, the scenario you're describing, uh, one way I can think of is the instruction create a mirror board and have a image or a sentence or an article in the, in the mirror board, but you only let students to comment on it. So you know which students has been commenting on and really look at your content. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, um, folks okay. that just came in like today, I, do you need if you want to share this with your professor or share it with your mom or whatever? Do they have? Do you have to log in to see it or? Um, is oh it no! Uh, just like what I did for this this PD board. There's an option here that says anyone with the link can do something. Terrific. So here you can only view comment, edits, or even no access. So with anyone that comes in with the link, you can see they have some interesting names. Yes, yes, sculptor. Uh, and there was something else just before, but it's gone. But yeah, so it gives you a random name. Um, if you want to have, make sure they come in with their name, you probably have to tell them to register. Oh. Also, you have presentation mode, which is handy, and I think I would test this function in the future. Uh, another thing I didn't say too much about is the frames. The frames is actually helping you to do presentations. So you can go from one to another. And it's, it's just this fancy, smooth scrolling functions. Let's see if I can. Thank you, Say so we have another frame here with our our image. So if I go to presentation mode, I switch between two frames. This is where the frames comes in handy. So since we have some other time. I would like to share some examples on their website with you guys. So on the Miro website, um, there are a lot of resources. Also, if you go to the use cases, you'll see what they mean by meeting and workshops you you actually have videos and in this video you actually see the video chatting function which is paid function but it's there uh nine million users you can see all the big companies they have their team using it so they have icebreakers brainstorming journey mapping Daily stand ups. And this is just a tiny part of what they can do. It's a really cool collaboration tool. And about brainstorming. So, this is what we were talking about sticky notes different types of brainstorming examples. They have a really clear and interesting way of presenting this tool. You can see they use the same tools, but different 
way of using it makes different uh, effort. I think this tool can be applied to a lot of students from different majors. Uh, but it's a little bit challenge, challenging for instructors, uh, instructors to think about how to implement or what's a good way to use this tool. A clear instruction, instruction will help a lot. Uh, I guess you have to spend some time to get familiar with these tools. Which is not too hard. Um, can can the can you print this? This like the final thing? Is it something that you can? Yes, actually, I did. I did a. So here, as so a export, export is board. Of course, it doesn't print everything, but. If you have created a frame or is a frame, yeah. So if you created a frame, you can actually name it, right? And when you are selecting this board, you can share and save as image or PDF. Uh, I think it's for free account, you can save as image, then you can print it. Uh, but to do PDF and everything else, you probably have to uh, have a paid account or an educational account if you want to apply for one. And there's an embed, which I haven't tested if this works in Canvas, but theoretically it should be. That's brilliant. You can save it to Google Drive, Jira, and it's also CSV, the amazing how flexible this product is. You can also back up. Uh, we're happy to take any more questions. Yeah, I was thinking like even if um, a faculty member wanted to uh, create something on the Miro board um, and have the students analyze it, maybe like the research process, or something like that, where it can be a little more engaging and then have students, um, if they download it as an image or a, or a PDF or something, um, then uh, students can then analyze it. So it, all, it can also be used as like an instructional material. Yeah, that's a really great idea. Implementing the comments. Uh, so the professor create a very, like the process, then students use the comment function to analyze it. It sounds brilliant. Thank you. Nicole. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, because even in like engineering or like computer science where they have like flow diagram, this could be mm -hmm. extremely useful if students have to create a flow diagram of how their system will work or their their process. That would be that would be really cool. And what's exciting is there's like our team, we've got a thing that we created and we want to share it with everybody and get their feedback. But one person is going to see one thing and another person is going to see another thing. This gives you the opportunity to give people a chance to provide their feedback and ideas in any format that they want. They can talk about it. They can make a picture. They can point to something. They can show a different idea. This is fantastic. Yes, this is really it's really handy tool and for everybody to share, collaborate, and integrate to integrate the informations that, that everybody comes up with. And as I said, it's a big canvas. It's infinite. This is like so huge that you don't even know how to um, describe the flexibility of this. Um, Kim was Kim Nicholson is is uh, is has meant, made several comments about using it, and uh, I we just I just wanted to know if she would share some of what she creates uh, with the rest of us so that we can oh, uh, sure. we can bring it bring it around because uh, I can tell it's uh, it is it's exciting and uh, I know I'm looking forward to trying it out. 
yeah, in greater absolutely. detail. Yeah, I was thinking this could also be used kind of what, like Kathy was saying, um, but uh, but yeah, absolutely having like this in meetings where you're trying to communicate maybe like a new like like process for you know your organization or where, wherever you are and trying to communicate that uh, visually this could also help for sure if you're on like a committee or something like that yes that'd be awesome i i think i'm seeing a lot of uh, potential applications for this and uh, a lot of ways that this is going to support meaningful learning one thing i want to show i mean this is probably the of one way to also share your content. If I go to YouTube, uh, there's a share function with embed code. And I go back here. If I do this thing, then we have a YouTube video inside Miro. It's not amazing. It's so cool. I think this applies to a lot of different things. Like if you engineer and you have the block of code that you see on the internet, paste it here. It works. And that's my presentation today. I hope you guys like it. Uh, if you have more questions, we have a little bit more time. If not. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, Kent, for for sharing this and 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 letting us play around a little bit in there. That was kind of fun to see everybody uh, hopping around in there. That was really cool. So um, uh, again, any of the any of you that would like more information or uh, need some questions answered about it, uh, I'm gonna. Volunteer Kent to answer them for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today.